Welcome back to a new video. So in this video, we are starting a new topic of multiple wells or well fields. So typically in applications or in practice, we use multiple or multiple wells, well fields to achieve some goals. So if we want to drop the water level, the water table, for example, at a construction site for dewatering, uh, we'll need to use multiple fields so that, you know, to achieve that design goal. Uh, similarly, in, for example, in pump and treat um, operations, typically you might have you know, multiple pumping wells in order to um, define a capture zone, if you will, or to isolate completely the uh, groundwater that is polluted. Uh, and then you might have injection wells you know, or other wells to re-inject the water in different places. Uh, so in both of those cases, you need, you know, multiple wells to achieve some goal as opposed to just one well as we've seen so far. Uh, so here's an example of the Chicago River uh, during a construction. So at a construction site and you can see the sheet piles isolating the Chicago River, the river uh, on the right hand side. <coughs> uh, and then the, constru the construction site on the left hand side and you can see that it's been dewatered. So of course the water table has been dropped you know, in the construction site uh, so that you know we can pour the foundation and isolate the uh, the work site from the water. So this is an example. Dewatering is a typical example where we need to pump you know water out of the construction site. Uh, another example again is the pump and treat uh, systems. So on the right hand side here you have a, a picture of an actual you know pump and treat uh, site where you can see there's like two uh, different pumping wells in this case, and then you can see the pipes if I can you know, the pipes like uh, carrying that water away to some surface treatment facility, presumably. And again, once the water is treated, maybe it's re-injected uh, in the aquifer or it may be discarded in the surface water if it's permitted. Uh, on the left-hand side here, you have uh, our little Excel uh, model, finite difference model that we've seen before, showing again a, a four-well system with two pumping and two injections. So these would be pumping wells and then these would be injection wells uh, going back into the aquifer. And this is on the bottom here, this is a top view of the same. So if we look at it from a top down, you can see that in the middle here, we have a completely isolated um, cell where you know the groundwater, the regional groundwater is not affected basically by this cell. So this cell is completely isolated from the regional groundwater and therefore, we can treat that water and basically it's, it's not polluting, you know, the regional aquifer anymore. So again, we'll see how these, uh, how we can calculate, you know, we, how we can design those pump and treat systems by calculating the capture zone and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so these next uh, few lectures will be organized. Uh, first, we'll deal with a superposition principle. So again, when you have multiple wells, basically, what is the interaction between them? How does that work? How can we use, you know, several wells uh, to define the um, drawdown in, you know, in the target site? Uh, so we'll do a couple lectures on superposition, uh, and then we'll do a couple lectures on boundaries because these are very much related to um, superposition, right? So when you have a boundary, let's say a, excuse me, let's say a river here, right? If this is a river, this is a recharge boundary meaning that there's always water you know, flowing towards your well. And this is very similar to what we've done with a uh, leaky confined aquifer, for example, the Hantush um, um, leaky confined you know, well equation. So at some point you reach some steady state basically where the recharge boundary is providing water to the well uh, directly. So how do we deal with those types of boundaries? And then the opposite, so here is the answer basically where you do have a uh, recharge well, basically an image uh, solution. So we'll we'll talk about those in a in a few lectures. Um, so here's an another example where you have a river, you know, in between with a pumping well on the left hand side, and you do a recharge well as an imaginary uh, image, so we can account for that boundary. Uh, another case is, and we'll do an example of those too. Um, if you have a solid boundary, so a, a a no flux boundary essentially or a, a mountain range for example or a, a granite um, you know a igneous rock outcrop for example that doesn't you know let 
water flow at all, so an impervious, basically, uh, boundary, you know, how do we deal with those, with those imaginary uh, 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 solutions or imaginary wells? So again, this is all linked to the superposition uh, lectures. And then finally, we'll do a few lectures on actual dewatering and capture zones, pump and treat. Uh, so these will come a little later. Uh, and then here is an example design. So a lot of those lectures I'll actually uh, teach using so, sort of little problems, little examples, just to show you, you know, how we apply now the knowledge that we've acquired on wells to, you know, real life situations, if you will. So here's an example. Uh, we have two lines of wells, so again, multiple wells in a line, to dewater an excavation in an unconfined aquifer. Initial saturated thickness is 110 feet. We have the hydraulic conductivity at 15 feet a day. Uh, specific yield is given at 10%. We want to draw down at the center of the excavation to be 40 feet within one year for if each line is 1,500 feet long and 400 feet apart, and each well can produce 50 gallons per minute, how many wells are necessary? Okay, so again, a very practical, concrete, if you will, example of, okay, well, I have a site, I need to dewater, I need to do two lines of wells, you know, how many wells do I need, right? That's a very practical question. Okay, uh, this is it for this general introduction on the upcoming uh, lectures, and in the next one, we will jump into the superposition principle and those lectures. Thank you.